Yes. Not surely. Not surely. <laughs> Maybe surely tomorrow. Who knows? Um, tell me about yourself. Um, my name is Sienna Bordello. Um, I have a project called Black Bordello. Um, and that's been going for about two years. And I'm also involved in some other projects. But that's my main thing. Okay. And uh, it's named after yourself? Uh, yeah, it's actually named after my family business, which is Il Bordello, which is an Italian restaurant. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what's the project about? Like, what's what sound can people expect when they check it out? So, I've always found it quite difficult to describe, as have other people, but I would say we've got a synthesis of kind of jazz, blues, um kind of punk sensibilities at times and um, soul and maybe like trip hop. Um, We kind of teeter on the brink of a lot of things, Mm -hmm. um, but we don't commit to any one thing. All right. What about your own personal like influences? Are there any particular artists that you look up to or that you're particularly influenced by? Well, definitely my main influence is David Bowie. All right. uh, Without a doubt, because... Um, I think his way of music making is, for me, um, really interesting in that he doesn't commit to one pathway and he's constantly reinventing things, mm-hmm. um, which is what I aim to do um, in in my project. And also, um, but yeah, no, in terms of music, I love, um, I'm really into jazz. So um, I've got big influences from people like Billie Holiday, Bessie Smith, Ella Fitzgerald, um, Cab Calloway, all of the kind of pre-war jazz stuff I think is really interesting vocally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that's really big for me. Who else is in the group? Um, We've got Anthony, who plays bass, Eddie, um, who plays drums, and we've got Henry, who's just recently joined as keyboard player, um, and he's got a musical theatre background, so we're we're actually quite theatrical now, um, which is quite fun. Um, Do you dress up for live performances? We don't tend to dress up. It's more like, I mean, we have in the past. We've done, like, clown faces and stuff, um, but we don't want it to be overly... We kind of want to speak through our performance and our music. We don't really want to aim to be kind of... A, a fashion band all right but yeah so when you say theatrical what do you mean then um the way that we perform um is definitely it's got it's got kind of um theatrical kind of influences um like there's a lot of movement there's a lot of expression and the songs themselves are stories as well so we we kind of act them out as we're playing them cool um and it's not something that we kind of plan it's just it just happens so let's talk about the songs what kind of stories do you have in them um i am quite into sort of mythology Mm -hmm. so i would say a lot of the songs have mythological backgrounds and characters that i've seen in other stories or kind of um patterns that I've I've noticed in uh things I'm interested in which is like poetry um plays and um yeah they come up and I I guess I kind of tell stories of characters and I try and embody those characters um and what and kind of act out what happens to them when I'm singing um and yeah so that so they're definitely fragments of things that I've seen and things that I've grown up seeing. Um, and I want to kind of reframe them in a modern context. Okay. Because um, I feel like a lot of them are getting sort of lost mm-hmm. now. Who's your favourite mythological character? If you had to pick one. Um, well, I don't know about favourite, but there are a lot of... Um, Greek myths that I find really interesting. One of which is, um, I wrote a song about uh, called Weaning, but it's um, called Orpheus and Eurydice, mm-hmm. and it's about this 
uh, but I, I retold it because it's this tale about this love story and then, you know, the the girl kind of gets um, eaten by snakes and then sent to the underworld and then he has, uh, Orpheus has to go and retrieve her but he gets told one um, rule which is that he's not allowed to look back mm-hmm. um, when he's crossing the underworld and then if he doesn't look back he'll get her back mm-hmm. um, and he he does look back and then she dies and she spends the rest of her days in the underworld but the story is told primarily from his perspective and she's kind of passive in the story so I thought it'd be more interesting to tell it from her point of view where she's um, she's actually kind of been betrayed by him okay. and she's not this damsel in distress and she actually starts reclaiming her life in the underworld and owning the darkness that she's been left with, right? which I think is quite interesting because she just kind of, a lot of these kind of female characters sort of get, um, they just get subject to whatever the men are doing. Sure. <laughs> um, so, but I think it's interesting retelling them from their point of view. So they're not just kind of like damsels in distress. They actually have their own narrative. That's cool. Um, sounds like it could be a book as well. Um, so in terms of uh, your career highlights so far, I don't know if you've been with the group for a long time. Do you have a past as a solo artist as well? How long have you been doing this for? Uh, so we've been doing it for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in those two years, what we've wanted to do is to get an album and that's happening now. And uh, we're really excited about that because we wanted to get the music out um because obviously that's the the springboard on which you then go on and do performances mm-hmm. and we've had some really good gigs in um southeast london area we put on a night called night at the bordello cool. uh, which is like a serial event um where we kind of get other people and we've had sort of um all sorts of performances so we've had we've played alongside other bands but we've also had clown performances there or theatrical performances poetry all, all sorts of stand up that kind of stuff as well because mm-hmm. we think it's interesting to have a a lineup that's not just all music cuz yeah. i don't know music is a is a broader thing in my opinion um but yeah so we we've, we've we've recorded an album and we've been focusing on getting that perfect um so that's like we've re- released a single um in mid June, well, at 31st of May, it came out on Spotify. Mm-hmm. And then we did a, a video, um, and we, uh, and uh, my friend Edie, she helped us do the video, she directed it, um, and that came out in mid June, uh, and that's for Spectre Man, so that's now available. And we're planning on doing the rest of the singles and videos, um, you know, as soon as possible. And hopefully the the album will be complete um, within the next couple of months. Cool. So yeah, so that's really what we're aiming towards, and then we can get on with writing new material. Um, and we're aiming to go on a tour in September nice. as well, which will be really good. So um, we're gonna get to where people can find out about you online in a second. But before we do that, are there any? challenges you've experienced that you've had to overcome that you wish you could uh, have had the answer to earlier is there's anything you could uh, any any words of wisdom you can pass on to younger musicians oh there's so many um the biggest one <laughs> i would say i got very very overwhelmed mm-hmm. with the especially I've, i i was kind of like i wanted a band um, I wanted to make music. I had limited understanding of how to do that mm. and what what the um, kind of protocol is for that. Um, and I also got a bit overwhelmed by the fact that I was like, um, in in terms of production, um, kind of I was a I, I was a kind of a female amongst a lot of like experienced men who. I felt that I wasn't qualified enough to um, direct things myself. Right. But, um, and also I felt that there was a wealth of information that I didn't 
know about and I couldn't possibly direct my own project without ha knowing this stuff. Mm. Um, and I had this uh, tutor called at my university called Mark Fisher, who um, he he had a really big sort of influence on um, kind of underground music culture. Mm -hmm. And he said, he showed me all these artists and he was like, look, they've, look at this band, they've recorded this in their toilet. They've, you've, this reverb is from their toilet. Or this microphone, it's not the state of the art thing. They, they've got the idea there that's all you need to start with. You don't need the top range Pro Tools and you don't need kind of a, a, a studio of people working to, to try and get the thing done. Obviously, that's the dream, if, to have as many hands in the project as possible yeah. and to get it done to the highest standard. But in the beginning, if you've got the passion and you've got the talent and you've got the idea, really just get it out in any way that you can and that would be my advice to someone because I was so, I was just very, I just felt that I, if I did it, it would be wrong. And that stopped me from doing it for a while. Um, and as soon as I kind of let go of that and actually just thought, you know, I don't need, I can just get, uh, I can just get an, uh, any mic and plug it in and do it from my, my home and my bedroom. Um, that's how I made music for a while, for a long, long time. So I would say to people just, just do it. If you don't think you're qualified, you are. Like you just need the idea, and you need the 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 spark, and that's it. Cool. So, where can people find out about your upcoming live performances and album? What's the go-to place online? Um, we've got a Facebook page called Black Bordello. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we put most of our gigs. Um, I have an Instagram page called Sienna Bordello, which is my name, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I put most of the stuff for the band as well. Um, we are going to get our own um, Black Bordello Instagram page, but for now, that's where I post everything. Um, yeah, so the Facebook and the Instagram are the main places, um, and our single Spectre Man is available on all streaming platforms and stuff, so... That's where you go to listen. To that. Good stuff. Oh, we've got a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Which has got, which actually, is the one I should have mentioned first because it's got all our videos on it, and that's probably most interesting one to look at. Cool. Really. We'll put a link to that in the description as well. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Oh.